Hello, welcome back. So we're going to build a 555 timer, a stable multivibrator. Now what does that mean? Well it just means it's an oscillator that goes on and off. You could use it for anything like an LED flashing circuit or if you make it go faster it'll generate an actual tone that you can hear through a speaker like a buzzer or something like that. They have a lot of purposes and they've been around a long time. The chip itself is um, quite small. It's just an 8 pin chip. I'll try and get some light on this for you. You can see that. It's just an 8 pin chip. Uh, so it's quite small. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take this and put it on a uh, put it on a piece of ferro board. Um, probably on a holder. And like I was saying earlier, the pin spacing is exactly right. So it just sort of fits. We don't have to drill anything out, which is uh, very convenient. And we're going to solder some components around that on the board. And then we'll power it up and make an LED flash on and off. Simple as that, really. That's the circuit diagram that I've just uh, found on the internet. Uh, and uh, we're going to build exactly that. So we've got a couple of resistors here. Um, a capacitor here, another capacitor over here, and an LED um, with a series uh, resistor to stop it from being too bright. So um, that's what we're going to build. So from the circuit, we're going to put the chip on the board, add some more components around it, and then actually power the thing up and show it working. So let's go for it right now. Okay, the first thing we have to do is to uh, get the board down to a sensible size. That's far too big. Uh, that would be really wasteful if we just had one chip on it like that. <laughs> so, different ways of cutting it up, but what I tend to do is I just use a standing blade or a, uh, some sort of craft knife. And score the board where you want it, and it just snaps off. So, I'm just going to cut out a bit of board, making it, you know, just make a, a general visualisation of how much space am I going to need. There's not many components in an LED, so it doesn't have to be much bigger than the chip itself, really. Probably an inch or so square. Take your knife. Make sure the copper's okay on the other side. And we'll just cut out a bit of board. And all I'm doing is just scoring it. Um, I've got a rubber mat under here so I don't damage my worktop. Just keep scoring that. And then score it that way. What might happen is, because I'm not doing this very carefully, it might shatter when you when you score it. So another good way of doing it is just to go all the way along the board, go the full length, and then it snaps clean. So I'll do that. I'll just keep going. And all it's doing is creating a, a weak point, you know, in the actual, in the board itself. So, there you are. that should probably snap. There you go. So now, I've got a big bit and a little bit. That can go back into the store cupboard for later. And this little bit here should snap off as well. That's, there you go. So, bring it down to the sides we want. That's another spare piece that can go in the cupboard. And that's actually what we're going to use for our 555 timer circuit. If you can see that there. Right. Okay. Now the next thing is... Very important to clean the board first. Um, with it being copper, it gets an oxide layer on it. And over time, it gets worse and worse gets to the point where if it's that old you can't actually solder onto the copper so best way I use is just a, a quite an abrasive rubber um, you know uh, sort of thing you get from an arts or a craft shop but it's it's quite um, it's quite abrasive it's got like it's almost um, metallic in it to feel of it you know it's got particles in it it's not like them soft ones that you use just to rub out pencil lines it's a bit more than that and simply clean the copper I'll try and keep this in shot so you can see it and just give it a wipe now 
what I'll show you is, uh, hopefully, if I can get it in focus, hopefully you can see the bit that I've done. I'm relying on the autofocus on the camera, I probably shouldn't be doing that, it's not very good. Hang on a second, Let's see if I can get this actually in focus for you, then you can see it. Yeah, it's not going to do it. Anyway, I hope you can see that one side's actually cleaner than the other. There you go. Um, you know, so it, it's, there's a huge difference, and obviously that's going to solder really well, and this is going to be difficult to solder. Um, so what we need to do is clean the whole board up, and then all the same. And uh, get rid of all the oxide off the copper. And you have to do this with new boards as well. I mean, even if you buy a new piece from a shop, uh, the chances are it's been in, it's been in storage for a long time. So by the time you get it, it's black. You know, it's completely oxided up. Get a, get a blow, up. and there you are, nice and clean. Well, clean enough. Anyway, right. So onward. So the next thing I'm going to do is to get a chip holder. Um, I could solder the chip directly onto the board. Um, could do that, but uh, we'll be fancy and we'll uh, we'll use a chip holder. The advantage of the chip holder is if anything happens to the chip, like if you blow it up or anything, you know, you, you make a mistake or whatever, you put too much, uh, too much, too high a voltage across it or something, and it breaks, then you can just pull the chip out, plop another one in. You don't have to use your solder line, so it's very good for things like that um, now I need to find a, a four pin holder there you go so right so that's a four pin chip holder and um, what we're going to do is we're going to put that on the board making sure that the copper runs the correct way and I'll just put the um, I'll put the chip holder uh, roughly in the middle. Um, so we've got we've basically got room, we've got room around the chip, you know, um, to put the other components basically. And it's important, like I said earlier, to make sure that the copper runs the right way. The copper's running um, horizontally there, so that the when you solder the pins, you're actually getting a conduction left and right of the chip. If that makes sense, yes. If you do it the other way, you're in trouble because uh, you'd be shorting out all the pins. <laughs> that all be shorted out, and that's no use whatsoever. So it's got to be running a wave left and right from the from the chip. Okay, so let's plop that on there. And all I'm doing here is I've just got it on the board on the bench here. I'm using my I'm using my angle lamp so I can see what I'm doing. Nice illuminated bench lamp. Uh, really handy especially if you like me and you need a little bit of assistance with your eyes at close distance okay and then let's just get some get our solder and a soldering iron and we can basically uh, go for it so let's just um, I'll try and get this in shot but you might not see everything let's just solder the thing so that's one pin soldered already I'll just keep going. Yeah. Simple as that. So there you go. Now that's actually soldered into place. That's the chip holder there. Um, if you look closely, you might not see this. I'll explain it to you rather than try and show you. There's a, a little dent in the top of the holder, and that's a, like a almost like a key slot or a key marker, which indicates the orientation of the uh, of the chip. And it's always a good idea to have that at the top, so you always know where pin one is, pin four, uh, pin five, and pin eight. So it always tells you the orientation. That means you always get the chip in the right way around. And when you design the, uh, you know, when you actually put the thing together, you know where the components have to go because you need to know which pins is which. So look out for the little key slot on the holder, and that will coincide with the little dent or key slot, if you like, marker in the chip. 
so that's also got one as well so they go together and it makes sure that you get the chip round the right way if your eyes are not that good then you might have to use a magnifying glass but it is there all chips have it right so that's soldered so the next thing we need to do is to um use the um use the vero tool and actually cut the tracks between uh, between the uh between the pins because at the moment everything on the left is soldered to everything on the right they're all connected through so you need to break all this the other uh, tracks down the middle and that's what we'll do right now now i actually have a proper vero tool if i can find it In here somewhere. There you go. Right. Okay, so here we are. So that's a proper Vero cutting tool. It's called a Vero cutter or Vero tool, I think people just call it. And basically, that's just got like a um, it's almost like a drill bit on the end, almost like a drill tip, and uh, and a nice chunky handle, so you've got something to get hold of. And what we're going to do is we're just going to break the tracks down down the center to separate the uh, the pins from the left hand side to the right hand side so I'll do that right now put the tool in give it a twist a few times it doesn't take much you don't want to go end up going all the way through the board <laughs> don't have to go that far give it a little clean there sometimes I use a toothbrush and let's just see if we can get this thing that focus probably not there you go and hopefully you can see that it's actually got a um, a break in that top track there where I've just made a hole and uh, we need to do the other three and all the way down and separate all the tracks so I'll just keep going that's two done three done doesn't take long four done and I'll just use a toothbrush to get rid of the excess copper and that's now uh, get around the right way, and that's now done. So, yeah. So now the uh, the pins are separated from the left to the right, and we have copper leading away from the left and leading away from the right. So uh, that's now ready to solder. Okay. What I'm going to do now is um, stop the video. I'm going to get my components together. I've got resistors and capacitors and all sorts of things here, and I'll get my parts together, and then we'll continue.